She's dead. <laughs> She's bored. She's bored. <laughs> Bless you, my goodness. It's allergy season for Lisa. Hi. Uh, this is Jessica of Awkward Embraces. Um, we, um, as you may know, um, we are shooting thank you videos for our Indiegogo campaign. We're currently raising money on Indiegogo to finish season two. And if you donate a certain amount of money, one of the perks is that you get to submit 10 questions to your favorite cast member. And uh, then the favorite cast member answers them um, and puts them on YouTube. Uh, so here I am. These are the questions for Jason, and I may mispronounce this, and I apologize. <clears throat> Jason Chung, I believe. You're awesome regardless. Um, and here are your questions. Um, how did you come up with the idea of this web series? Um, and then the second question is, is who came up with the idea of the web series? Um, uh, I had been wanting to do something on the web for a while. I tried to do a sketch comedy thing that didn't really work out. Um, and Lindsay and Candace were originally a part of that sketch comedy thing and I invited them to do that because they're hilarious. Um, <clears throat> you know, and so we were talking about just, you know, just shooting something just to get our reels together or whatever. So I wrote the donut episode, um, which is a real story about my life <clears throat> that I think is funny. Um, and I had been wanting to put it in some sort of like romantic comedy or something like that. I just had to use it. It's just comic gold. Uh, so the idea of, of the the friend telling the girls and then the flashbacks and all that stuff uh, and then it was actually going to be a short film we also had the guys talking about what had happened the night before um, so we shot that and it was really super fun and we had a good time uh, so and the premise was so great and lent itself so well to using all these other stories that I have from my awkward dating life and that I've heard from friends and, and this and that and the other um, so that's sort of how it, how it happened um, yeah um, <clears throat> do you feel or think there have been more of a presence of seeing more female geeks out on the web? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think definitely. You know, I think what happened was we've always been there, but it, it's hard, you all know this, it's hard to connect uh, with other geeks um, in real life. I mean, partly because, well, I know I really enjoy spending time at home. <laughs> and I think a lot of other geeks do too, so we don't really socialize a whole lot. Um, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, you go to Comic-Con and you're like, my people, yay! And then you go back home and you're like, oh, you know, can't wait for the next con. Um, but with Twitter and, and Facebook and everything like that, I think Twitter especially, because it's such a, like, a chat room, it's basically like a worldwide chat room. Um, and then, you know, Facebook and all this social networking and, and bulletin boards and forums and, and all this stuff, um, geeks are finally finding each other and talking to each other and uh, I think the geek girls especially it took us a lot a, a little longer to find each other because there's all there's that myth that, that geek girls are like unicorns you know um, because they seem rare and what I'm finding is that they're actually not that rare they're they're just as common as geek guys are we're just um, you know it's just a little harder to, for us to find each other so it just took us a little longer so, but I think right now like we're really starting to plus we've, you've got like the geek girls network um, geek girl con um, you have all these like amazing bloggers you know geek girl diva and a uh, nerdy bird and and uh, geek with curves and and all these you know girls that are writing blogs and putting themselves out there and then people are sort of banding around them and especially the geek girls network you know they did that geek girls exist panel at SDCC last year and and that was really like, you know, so now that, that the geek girls are starting to put themselves in more of a public place, like these, these women are sort of the trailblazers for the geek girls. And, you know, now geek girls look at them and they're like, oh, they're like me. Who else is like me? So I really think that was sort of the, the catalyst for it when these, these geek girl bloggers and the geek girls network and Nerdy Bird and those people started to become, become bigger and more, um, <clears throat> um, what's the word I'm looking for? More prominent, I guess. Um. Then the other geek girls. Now we're now the geek girls are starting to rally, and and uh, geek girl con is happening, and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. Yes is the short answer to that question. I babbled, and I apologize. Okay, um, it's something I'm very excited about. It's a it's a it's a subject close to my heart, so I can talk about it for for days. Um, why do you feel so? Why did you feel so passionate to create this web series? Um. Well, uh, I'm a, I'm an actress. Um, now I'm a web series creator. Um, but I just, when I started, I really just wanted to put something out there. You know, I, I really passionately believed in, in myself 
and my abilities and I believed in Lindsay and Candace and their abilities and I you know I wanted us to have a chance to really you know shine um, and it, you know in LA it's it's very difficult for sort of you know regular girls to get seen if you're not that super like gossip girl type looking girl you just get overlooked they don't quite know what to do with you necessarily and it's very hard I mean it's a hard job to, it's a hard job to break into anyway um, so you know when it started out I just I was just really passionate about showing people what we could do and then when I got into it I, I found that, that um, I love all of it I love I love the writing, the, the creating, coming up with the idea for a show and, and, and sketching it out and writing the scripts and then producing and getting all the people together and everything. I, um, I love it. I love the whole process. So now I no longer consider myself an actress. I consider myself a, a, a web series creator um, and a writer and an actress. So um, it's just, I think it's just always what I was meant to do. It's, it's what always what I was supposed to be doing. That's how I feel anyway right now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, when you love what you do, um, the passion is just there and, and the drive is just there because you, you don't ever want to stop. Uh, yeah, so that's the answer to that question. Um, <clears throat> how do you keep the drive to continue to want to make more episodes of this series? Oh, I just answered your question. <laughs> I psychically knew what you were going to ask. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I just love it. I love doing it. Um, I love doing this show. The show is so fun. Um, I want to keep doing it, but I also love creating. I want to do more shows. I want to create more web series and um, uh, and keep keep putting putting awesome stuff out there. I just love doing it. Mm, so yeah, that's where the drive comes from. Love. Um, do you have any advice for people who are interested in making web video series of their own? If so, what are they? Um, <clears throat> my advice is um, your writing and your casting are your two most important things, um, especially when you're doing low budget. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, I feel like um, some filmmakers they'll be a lot more interested in, in the flashy stuff than really like the writing and the characters. Um, and I've always felt that's the most important thing. And the flash and, and the cool stuff, like that's great. Like that stuff enhances the other. But if you don't have solid writing, solid characters, and really solid actors to portray it and speak those words um, in, in a way that makes people want to listen, then, um, then you don't have anything. So that's, that's always my very first and foremost advice for, for web series creators is that you have to make sure that you, that's the most important thing. Um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> How are you able to market out your video to, sh uh, to show to a wider, wider audience outside of your own group of friends? Um, <clears throat> a lot of it was just, um, just uh, I'm really hard-headed and I just wouldn't stop. You know, I mean, when we first came out, you know, we went on Facebook and, and we grew pretty, we still grew pretty quickly because the, you know, it's, it's a good show and the product is pretty good, but there was a point where we kind of stalled out a little bit. <clears throat> um, but I just kept, uh, I kept tweeting and I kept, uh, reaching out and, um, you know, you, you, sh I submitted to several different blogs. I submitted to a bunch of places for reviews and, uh, and no one was really interested in reviewing it. Um, no one really got back to me, you know, but I just, um, I kept, uh, I just kept going. I kept uh, building, you know, tweeting and talking to people and and meeting people and and going to places where I knew that other web series people might be and meeting those people and getting advice from them and you know you just can't ever stop. I mean, it, and it does feel like it really did for the first for the first six months. It really felt like a like I was just bashing my head against a wall. You know what I mean? I mean, we were doing pretty good, but you know, friends and family told their friends and family, and then that was kind of it, and we just sort of stalled out, but I just never stopped. I just kept going and going and going, because I just believed in my product so much. I was like, I know if, if people just see it, they'll love it. I just know it, you know, because it's so good. I, I'm just sure. Um, so I just wouldn't let myself give up on it. And then um, and then one day, I had um, uh, added the Arbor Embraces Twitter, um, started following the Nerdy Bird, and like a month later, she noticed and she checked out the show and she blogged about us and that was it like phew, like everything I, I owe a huge debt of thanks to, to Jill Pantozzi really because that was the that was the big turning point for us and the funny thing is we were reviewed in the New York Times before Jill Pantozzi saw the show um, and that like bumped us up some views and stuff but it didn't really help build a fan base for us at all but Jill um, blogged about us and then then everything took off and and people started watching it and now we're getting reviewed all over the place and all this stuff and so 
Um, so yeah, it's, if you just, you just have to, I'm, I'm really stubborn. It is one of my worst and one of my best qualities. And this is an example of my hard head being, um, a good thing, <laughs> um, in spite of the many ways it can become a bad thing. So yeah, you just have to, you just, just don't stop. You just have to keep it, keep going and going and going. And, uh, and then eventually something will happen. So hopefully, you know, but yeah. Okay. Um, these are very... These, these questions are making me quite chatty. <laughs> I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, uh, how much do you think or believe that social media has helped you expand your viewing audience? Dude, Twitter has changed my life. Now, I didn't want to get on Twitter because I was like, anything that Ashton Kutcher thinks is cool is not something that I ever want to do. But my roommate, Patty, who's holding the camera right now. Hello. Patty. Hello. Uh, <laughs> co-producer, roommate and co-producer. She, um... She sat me down. I was like, I know I need to do Twitter. Everybody's saying I have to tweet for, to promote the show. Fine, I'll learn how to do Twitter. So she sat me down. She taught me what hashtags were and what a retweet was and all that stuff. And, uh, and so then I just started tweeting. And then I, I met some, um, some fun people and some, some cool nerds. And, uh, and I was just having fun on Twitter. I was just having, I didn't, I didn't tweet from the Awkward Embraces Twitter hardly at all, <clears throat> actually. Uh, um, I still don't really do it very much. Patty does most of it at now, um, just because it was so much more fun to, to just, you know, watch Star Trek and talk about how much I like Star Trek and stuff, and, and then, you know, I've met so many friends on Twitter, I've met so many incredible, awesome people through Twitter, and so many people have found the show through Twitter, that it's, it's kind of amazing, and I still, I genuinely have a blast, I have so much fun tweeting, and I feel like, um, you know, I have friends here that I see in real life, but I do feel like, you know, there's all these cool geeks that, that follow me on Twitter and we talk about geeky stuff and I have a blast doing it and it's so much fun and it, you know, um, it's neat. I feel like I have like a whole community of friends, um, out there, nerd friends. It's awesome. So, um, yeah, Twitter more than Facebook. Facebook, you know, does a little bit, but not a whole lot. Um, Twitter is, is amazing. Um, so if you can, if you can harness Twitter, you're in good shape. Um, it helped me out a lot anyway. Um, <clears throat> do you like or watch the TV show Big Bang Theory? Maybe you can grab one of those actors in a future episode of Awkward Embraces. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, a ton of people I know love the Big Bang Theory. It is on my giant list of things to watch. I hate it. If I can't see the first like two or three episodes of a show, I can't watch it until I, I, I can't, I'm not one of those people that will jump into a show in the middle. I just can't stand to do it. I feel like I'm missing out on, on important background information. <laughs> so, um, so I missed like the first season and now I'm trying to find the time to catch back up. So someday I should publish this list of, of rewatch things I have. I just at least need to write it down so I don't forget. Um, are you all working a possible season three of Awkward Embraces? Can you give us any hints that can possibly maybe happen in next season? Yes. I have season three pretty much planned out, um, and I'm really excited about it. Um, it's all just in my head. I haven't written any of it down yet, though. Uh, I can't tell you yet because I don't want to spoil any of season two. But once season two finishes, then you can ask me that question, and I'll give you some hints as to what's going to happen in season three. Um, so, and that's it. Those are Jason's questions. Jason, thank you so much. You're awesome. Um, have a good day. Bye.